Hello children, I am Suma, Economics Lecturer, Gopal Swami PU College, Mysore. In continuation with the session of Production and Cars, today we are going to learn the next concept of this lesson that is the Law of Variable Proportions. This is an important concept from the point of view of your examination. It could be asked for even 4 marks or for 6 marks. So let's see, yesterday in our previous session we learnt that the total product, average product and marginal product are the three types of products that are available out of the production unit. Total product is nothing but the aggregate of the product that is produced out of a firm. The marginal product is one more addition of the same product that is produced because of one more addition of the variable factors called as land and capital. The average product is nothing but the unit of output which is produced per unit of input. So, these three types of products are there in a production unit. So, now let us see about the law of variable proportions. <coughs> the production function as we all know that it is the function of R, L, K and O. That is R is land, L is labor, K is capital and O is organization. For land, the reward is rent. For labor, the reward is wages. For capital, the reward is interest. And the organization, the reward is profit. So, now let us see how this law of variable proportion works and how is it is effective to improve the production of a firm. The, it is the input and output relationship. Law of variable proportion is nothing but the input and output relationship wherein it applies only for a shorter period of gestation, shorter period of duration. Here the output is increased by varying the quantity of any one variable input because here in this uh, shorter period the R that is land, labor, capital and organization here only the labor and capital are the variable factors of production. In the long run the land, labor, capital and organization all the four are variable factors of production but here in the shorter period it is the land and organization these two are the fixed factors of production and labor and capital are the variable factors of production. So it is the output that is increased by varying the quantity of any one input that is either labor or capital. So, the law of variable proportion says that an increase in variable factors, they are the variable inputs which are labor and capital in a given state of technology with the available equipments cause an increase in output but after a particular point the extra output resulting from the extra addition of the same inputs will become less and less. That is, there is a stage as we know that there is a stage for every growth, for every development. First, that is the growth, initiation, then growth, then development, then saturation, then decline. So, these are the stages as here also in this law of variable proportion which applies only for a shorter period in the firm. There is an increase in variable factor, either it is land or uh, sorry, labor or capital. The same will be given in a state, and state of technology which cause an increase in output, but after at a particular point of time that the firm only should study uh, that which point of time it is going to happen or occur. So, the extra output resulting from the extra addition of same inputs will become less and less. So, the more you go on putting inputs varying the inputs the lesser will be the profit or output that you are going to get after a particular point of 
time. So there are three stages of law of variable proportion that is increasing stage that is increasing returns. Next one is diminishing returns and the negative returns. When you apply the labor or capital these two variable factors any one or either of the two okay so they may give you the increasing returns till certain period till certain point of time after a period of time after a point of time it goes on diminishing so the increase goes on decreasing and at times it may give the negative returns also in a graph it may give the negative returns also first the increasing stage is this then decreasing is this increasing returns diminishing returns and here we come the we come to the negative returns so these are the three important stages of law of variable proportion and it applies only to a shorter period in the lifetime of a firm over a period of time maybe within 12 months if we are going to calculate this law of variable proportion applies to three months or four months duration okay so now let's move to towards the long run so long run production here the again in the shorter period as we have the returns to scale here in the long run also we have the returns to scale here we have in the short run we have the increasing returns to scale diminishing returns to scale and negative returns to scale here in the long run also we have three stages that is increasing returns to scale constant returns to scale and diminishing returns to scale it it, it this here it applies only to the shorter period wherein in a longer period there is increasing returns to scale constant returns to scale and diminishing returns to scale so these three are very important concepts of the long run returns to scale here once the variable factors are applied because in a long run all the four factors will convert itself themselves into variable factors only so when all these variable factors have been input in the industry with different proportions they there will be first increasing returns only so after there is an increasing return increasing return in the output after applying the variable inputs in different proportions we get constant returns here no profit no loss situation here it is called as constant returns and after that we are going to get the diminishing returns or the declining returns. So in both the cases no way that there is a situation that when once it goes to the diminishing returns or when once it goes to the constant returns it will never move towards the increasing returns again. So here it is increasing returns here constant returns and then we come towards the diminishing returns. Therefore, the difference between the shorter period duration um, longer this law of variable proportion and the longer period duration law of variable proportion you must be knowing and this both can be asked for your uh, examination and you have to explain them with the help of this diagram. So, along with this there are two very important concepts that should be learned when we are learning about the law of variable proportions that is internal economies and external economies. The internal economies are the advantages of large scale production. If we are in towards the large scale production naturally we save time as well as money as well as labor. So many of the inputs that being that are being applied here will save some money and save some amount of energy and time to the firm and these we which, which these will arise within the firm when they are applying when they are doing the trial and error uh, trial and error effort of applying the variable inputs so this increases uh, this arise within the firm and when it increases its a scale produ production sc its a scale production by increasing all inputs that is the internal economies arise within the firm when it increases its a scale of production by increasing all inputs I said in the long run all inputs can be applied variably they are all applied varied in a varied situation and in a varied quantity so the major internal economies are technical economies 
managerial economies, marketing economies, risk bearing economies and transport and storage economies wherein we have another one type of external economies that is these are the benefits which a firm gets when the entire industry is expanded because of the more and more application of the inputs here because land labor capital and organization all these four factors in a long run becomes variable factors of production only and all these variable factors of production if they are applied in more number the industry will also get expanded as you all know a firm is a small unit of industry and an industry is a collection of varied firms various firms that are available in the market so they accrue to all the firms as a result of expansion in the output of whole industry and they are not dependent on the output of the level of individual firms because here in the large scale all the firms contribute to the development of the industry and not they would they not only consider the individual growth they together contribute as a team towards the growth of an industry and therefore this law of variable proportion is very popular when it comes to the expansion of an industry. The major external economies are the low costs of raw materials and capital equipments. If you are into large scale expansion of an industry definitely you will get the raw materials at a lesser cost than the existing one. The law the cost of the raw material will decrease not only to the industry but to the individual firms that are existing in the industry. So the next one is techno technological economies and the third external economy is development of skilled labor. The laborers, uh, those who are into the production activity will improve their skill because of the additional investment. They improve their production capacity and the laborers will also get more and more skillful and growth of ancillary industries the small scale industries which are like uh, in an assembling industry you have lots of other ancillary industries which support the raw materials in an uh, assembling industry the finished product of pro, finished product of one firm becomes the raw materials of another firm here the availability of the raw materials and the production of these small small spare parts will lead to a growth of another def another uh, industry and the next one is development of transportation communication and marketing facilities and all these large scale production will lead to the development of infrastructure and ultimately when once the infrastructure is being contributed to a greater extent naturally the firms will grow and when the firms grow they contribute as a team to the growth of the industry and therefore the developmental activities can be said to be more here and all these together contribute to the gross domestic product of the country. You all know that gross domestic product is nothing but the goods and services produced over a period of time. It is the to sum total of the goods and services produced over a period of time, usually one year. So, the, the internal economies as well as the external economies both are very helpful for the growth and development of the industries. In the case of production, every industry wants to sustain itself in the market by competing with its immediate neighbors or immediate next industries and they want to produce more with the lesser amount of investment. As we all know, as a consumer we tend to get the maximum satisfaction with minimum investment. As a producer, each production unit wants to produce more with minimum investment again with the lesser cost. Therefore, only they trade the labors to be skillful they give them the offline uh, sorry they give them the uh, uh, training also they pro, uh, they send them to different sectors of training so that they can improve their skills
scale. So, these diseconomies and decreasing returns to scale. The here, here again we have the economies to scale and internal economies and external economies are the two types of economies to scale. And like that only we have the diseconomies also. These are the disadvantages. Diseconomies are the disadvantages that in our previous lesson we learnt about the externalities that is from the uh, industry maybe there are some negative impacts on the neighboring area or maybe some positive effects of the industry in the neighboring area like that only here we have the <coughs> internal diseconomies which are the disadvantages which a firm faces due to the expansion of the large scale production. These are the lack of proper coordination among the different departments. When once the industry wants to expand itself, definitely it faces the challenge of lack of coordination. There is a lack, there will be a lack of coordination among different departments and for that only the industry may have to pay for. And the second one is lack of control on inputs because when, a, when an industry intends to expand itself, the control over the inputs will go. The third one is deterioration in communication between various departments that is again the lack of coordination amongst the departments that are existing. And the fourth one is lack of identification of the errors committed because when we are producing the goods in a large scale industry in a large scale with the accumulation of lots of inputs we don't know where we are going to commit the mistake until it is point out from the consumer for whom we are supplying. Therefore, only in the market we see goods returned. Goods will be returned because of defective packaging, because of the defective product that is produced. When we are producing in a large scale, there may be some errors and omissions and we may not give the same quality of the product that we were giving in the earlier stage when we are producing in a limited quantity. So, the external diseconomies the external diseconomies of the law, law of variable proportion is that the increased pressure on transportation. These days we are all having the infrastructure facility being expanded everywhere. Two lane roads are being converted into four lanes and four lanes are con being converted into eight lanes. So there is a lot of pressure for transportation and increase in the level of pollution. Again, if we want to expand, if we want to move towards the topmost nation in the uh, from the point of view of GDP, we are going to face these negative impacts of the expansion of industries. And the second one here is increase in pollution and therefore only we are having lots of pro people suffering from breathing problems. There are lots of people who are suffering from asthmatic ailments. This could be found in uh, areas like uh, Noida, Gurgaon, Haryana, Delhi, people are suffering. And the third one is shortage of capital. Again, I want to expand the industry and I want to contribute as an industry. I want to contribute to the GDP of the country. Here, I may find the shortage of capital and I may have to borrow it from somebody and for that I may have to pay the exorbitant rates of interest because when I am in need, I have gone to get the money from the others. I want to borrow money from others and the interest, whatever they are charging, I have to pay for that. The factors of production become very costly. The land, labor, capital and organization, these are the uh, four factors of production and all these four factors of production becomes costly because every factor of production that is being employed in the production for a large scale production unit, the cost of them also will increase and there is an increase in business risk and marketing problems. This is the major threat that when, the, when there is an expansion of industry, this is the major threat that every industry faces that there is a greater risk and marketing problems because uh, it is very difficult to coordinate among various departments from various corners of the place. From, for example, in India, from various corners of the country, it is very difficult to coordinate with various department people and the owner of that industry has to bear all these risk. So, with this, I conclude this session and in our next session we learn the cost of production or the production cost and the cost function. Thank you children.